Let's cover the second part of our economic survey. In the first part, we talked about the five important chapters, which mainly focused on the concepts related to uh, the economic perspectives, the macroeconomic indicators. In this section, we would focus mainly on the social parameters and the environmental concerns. So to Two chapters of the total uh, economic survey that we would cover in this are dealing to social infrastructure and employment and then climate change. So under the social infrastructure, there have been various issues which have been discussed ranging from human development, labor reforms, education, health, infrastructure uh, to the various government policies and how direct benefit transfer has been an important game changer. So the first important thing we would talk about is the government's declaration about the aspiration district for those aspirational district 49 key uh, performing indicators have been given under five broad categories uh, then we have the NCS portal which is for the job and this has now been interlinked with Ishram Udyam Skill India portal and under the ASIM uh, portal which is the primary database uh, job seekers and employers can collab collaborate together nearly 10 lakh candidates have been registered onto it and nearly 1.2 like candidates have been shortlisted by the employers. The next is for the education. Under the new education policy, the national curriculum framework for the foundational stage, which is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, has been released. The pilot project for the Bal Vatika, which is the early years of schooling. The release of PM Shri schools, which we have covered in a separate video. The implementation of toy-based pedagogy. Then the STARS scheme, which is strengthening teaching, learning and results for the state. Now, this has been implemented in six states. Those are Mah Madhya, uh, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra. Rashtra, Odisha and Kerala and this is for a period of five years till 2025 and this has been funded by World Bank. Similarly, there is another scheme in the name of Vidhyanjali and that is a student a school volunteer initiative. A CSR scheme and the private sector is getting involved under this scheme. Uh, there is another development which have come up under the new national education policy which is pursuing two academic programs simultaneously. One could be in an online mode, the other could be in an offline mode. Uh, providing interest subsidies on educational loans and creating research and development cell in higher educational institutions that would ensure that in future we are having a strong make in India and we are not reliant on to our neighbors for import of the basic and the fundamental commodities. Now some of the skill development schemes, for example, the Pradhan, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas uh, Yojana was launched in 2015 and then we have the version 3.0 which was implemented in 2021. Uh, it focuses on short term training and recognition of prior learning which indicates the themes and the ideas that you have learned already before and how they could be useful for you. The Jan Shikshan uh, Sansthan scheme and this talks about training the people who are not literate, less literate and have a rudimentary education level. Apprenticeship promotion scheme which talks about financial support to industrial establishments under the apprenticeship scheme program. Craftsman training scheme which provides training through the craftsmen and this has been important uh, indicator for um, India's development. So craft instructor training scheme where instructors in the field of craft have been uh, brought forward with hands-on learning skills and empowering uh, the youth of India, making India a skill capital through the National Skill Development Corporation. There have been uh, the National Skill Development Corporation International which has been established and Skill India International Network has been created. We have signed MOUs with nearly 11 different countries. The list have been mentioned here and business to business collaboration with another 18 uh, important areas where we have been mentioning it here. The next is Sankalp scheme which focuses on acquiring the skill and uh, knowledge awareness for better life quality and this is uh, with the help of the youth. So there have been various projects that have been done under it. Now for the health, in 2014 we talked about Mission Indra Dhanush and this was for uh, vaccination. Uh, we have the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan that is started in 2017. The National Health Policy and the Act for AIDS and TB Elimination was brought. In 2019-20, uh, e-Sanjeevni OPD portal 
portal was released the new uh, the social awareness action to neutralize the pneumonia successfully was released and in 2022 we talked about the tb mukt bharat the list of essential medicines that need to be revised and the telemedicine uh, the telemental health which is the telemenas program uh, in 2015 there were acts which pertain to the maternity benefit Six months of paid maternity leave to be provided. The Ujjwala Yojana National Dialysis Program in 2018, Ayushman Bharat, under which we had already covered in the part one, uh, the the concepts which were laid down under Ayushman Bharat. So the wellness health and wellness centers which were established under it, Poshan Abhiyan, which is for nutrition and anemia mukt Bharat. And in 2021, there were uh, COVID vaccination program through the COVID app. MTP Act was revised. in 2021 uh, the bharat digital mission and health uh, infrastructure mission were released now if we talk about the the rates the maternal mortality rate has declined significantly from 167 per 1000 to 97 which is a remarkable uh, figure infant mortality rate again has declined significantly we have under five mortality rate again on a fall and the early neonatal mortality rate which is during the first seven years of first seven days of the birth has again reduced so there has been reduction in nearly all the parameters and this has been from the sample survey uh, statistics when we talk about the ayushman bharat the establishment of wellness centers and the uh, units have been important so at the community level 30 bedded hospital which would take care of the four phcs at the phc 6 to 4 uh, bedded uh, uh, centers would be created with a medical officer in charge and a sub center which would be a point of contact between the primary health care center and the auxiliary midwives is again important now some schemes one is the intensified mi 4.0 scheme which talks about bringing and covering children and pregnant women under the uh, the nutrition scheme and the immunization scheme uh, the next is e sanjeevni which is a telemedicine portal uh, which is free of cost providing health citizens to uh, health services to all citizens at home soil transmitted helminthesis which is also known as para, para, parasitic in, intestinal worm infection uh, now this uh, causes deficiency particularly of vitamin a and iron and micronutrient deficiency so deworming is an important aspect professor michael kramer uh, who won a nobel uh, prize in economics in 2019 talked about the impact of deworming and school studies and he said that deworming leads to stunting and anemia A stunting would lead to absenteeism in the school, reducing the number of years of schooling and the overall productivity and quality of life. And anemia would impact the cognitive functions, ultimately affecting the quality of the life. In terms of India versus world, the doctor population ratio in India is one is to one eight. One eight three four. That means on every eight thirty four people, we have one doctor. However, the WHO norm says thousand to one ratio, which should be there. So definitely, there is a requirement for more uh, medical graduates to come. Focusing on the quality of life, if we talk about the various schemes, housing for all have been started under the. Pradhanmantri uh, 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 Avas Yojana, Gramin and Urban, and then we have the affordable healthcare under the Ayushman Bharat Yojana. Under the all weather roads, we have the Gram Sadak scheme. PM Shri schools to be set up and revolutionize the existing schools uh, under the scheme for education for social security. We have the uh, PM SBY. Then we have the Manrega schemes where nearly six point five crore households have been offered. Offered work across various schemes. NPC connections have been provided under the Ujjwala Yojana, under the Deen Dayal Upadhyay Gramin Koshal Yojana. Skill development centers have been established, and nearly 13 lakh people have been given training. Jal Jeevan Mission providing tapped water connection to nearly 11 crore people, and under the Sobhagya scheme providing the last point connectivity for electricity to the rural centers have been important. So those have been some of the important achievements. means as mentioned under manrega what have been done geo tagging of the assets providing funds direct through the direct benefit transfer scheme e payment mandatory expenditures on agriculture and allied activities 
through the jal jeevan mission water quality monitoring wash scheme and water quality management information system establishing of water quality testing labs maintaining uh, the mission uh, amrit sarovar which was launched in 2022 and the idea was to have nearly 75 water bodies to be rejuvenated in the 75th year of independence and these 75 bod uh, water bodies in every district should be revamped the idea is to enhance the water holding capacity by 32 crore cubic meter tons uh, and then also involve people uh, the local people the martyrs and their families in the project. Jaldoot app was launched in 2022 and was with an idea to measure the level of water in the gram panchayat through the open well twice a year and this would be recorded at the national level server at Jaldoot mobile app the ujwala scheme talks about the lpg connections the sobhagya scheme which is the sahaj bijli har ghar yojana the last point of electricity connectivity at home the gram jyoti yojana which provides uh, rural households with the power supply the swamitva scheme that talks about mapping through drone and this would actually have clear allocations of the land parcels to an individual land uh, the climate change is another important topic where we talk about india's progress in terms of climate action the finances for sustainable development the major decisions that have been taken so if we talk about some of the eight major aspects one is the solar uh, solar mission the mission for enhanced energy efficiency sustainable development green india water mission uh, strategic knowledge for climate change where centers for excellence for climate change have been established mission for sustainable himalayan ecosystem development where inter university consort consortium and r&d programs have been started and the idea of sustainable agriculture through which organic and natural farming have been boosted so in india we focus on green india mission the compensatory agroforestry fund management the afforestation program green highway program uh, urban greens uh, the national agro forestry policy uh, talking about the submission on the agroforestry so those are some of the important developments that have been taken into account green hydrogen as a source of energy the outcomes would be witnessed by 2030 we would have a significant addition to our renewable energy capacity uh, financial incentive targeting have been done for the same establishment of a good ecosystem and skill development programs for the same have been done now india Uh, has brought various climate resilient infrastructural projects where we are talking about resource efficiency building better infrastructure and energy efficient uh, building codes so efficient green building codes for development also the sovereign green bonds have been released in line to the sovereign gold bonds where individuals can uh, uh, invest into it and even Uh, the investments by non residents could be done through a fully accessible route and there would be uh, the funds which would be going into green energy for the development there is another uh, department which is established that's the coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure and this was launched by the pm at the uh, climate summit in new york in 2019 the idea is to partner the national government the un agencies and various stake organizations to have a infrastructure for climate and disaster risk uh, development similarly we are one of the uh, countries that rank 8th in the world and 4th in asia for mega diverse uh mega diversity that exists in india so protecting that diversity is again important project cheetah which we have covered in a separate video has again been one of the important focus in this uh section and then there was a section on e waste and battery waste management so battery waste management rules were brought in 2022 which talked about the new management rules the new rules would replace the existing 2001 rules and this would cover all the batteries which would include the uh, electric vehicles the portable batteries the automotive batteries and the industrial batteries as well so this was the second part of our economic survey uh, that we have covered covering the two important sections from it in the third part we'll cover the remaining sections on agriculture industry services external trade and digital infrastructure so those would be the five important topics that we would cover in the last part of our economic survey the links for the complete gs material are given in the link below do follow those and stay subscribe for further updates have a wonderful day